Okay, so this is the first part of this tutorial. So we have Windows 2003 running in uh, in the VMware here. So the first thing we'll do is to find out what the IP address is of the VM image. So in this case it's 75.132 and then we find out the IP address of our local host or the part of the network connection which connects to the local network which the VMware image is on. You can see it's 75.1 so it's 192.168.75.1 and 192.168.75.132 so we'll just ping from the, the virtual image in to the host see that works fine and we'll do the same again 192.168.75.132 and that works fine now over here uh, a key folder for us is the inet pub folder because this holds the the files for our FTP server mail server and also for our web server so we'll go into ww root so some of the files in there are iis.start, pageerror.gif, web.config. Web.config is an important file as it defines the security for many of the files in this folder. So what we'll do now is that we'll actually run netstat to see the services which are running in the VM image. So we can see here we have echo, disk card, daytime, and so on. We see we have an FTP server running, a Telnet server, an email relay server, and a web server here. So we'll just note a couple of these Telnet, HTTP, and SMTP. So to prove that our web server is running, do is we'll connect from our host into the VM image. Now you can see here that's that's working. Now what we'll do is we'll do the same but we'll do it with a telnet connection on port 80. 75.132 on port 80. And now what we've got to do is we've got to use get slash i is start.htm which is the default uh, page web page and you can see here this is the file that's actually returned this should be the same as our IIS start here and we can see what we have there so we can see the the format of the response to our web connection here. This could just sends the file as, as it is, HTML head and, and so on. Now what we'll do is that we'll create a file on our web server. We'll create a page on our web server and the page will look something like this. So we have on the virtual image Visual Web Developer Express. So we could start our folder from here but what we'll do is we'll start it from here open up a website and this is the place we should be www.root which is the home folder for web and here is our IIS start so what we'll do is we'll add our own page a new page so we'll call it fred.aspx It's two files, an ASPX file and also a C sharp file, which is our code behind. Now what we'll do is we'll create a very simple page. It's a sample ASP.net page. Click and we'll just 
you make this uh, link button because we can get some events from that. To return to the default home page. Just takes another minute for the properties to come through. Should get there eventually. Okay. So one of the properties is the text. Click here. And then we've got a whole lot of methods, and one of them is click. So we can double click on here or we can click here. So what we'll do is just double click here and we can see here that we have a click event. So response dot redirect and we'll just send it back to the home file here and then to test that we can just set that as our default start page hopefully this should work doesn't really do very much just now it's good as a test. Okay, so we do a click here, and hopefully that should take us back to the home folder. What we do over here now is we'll do the same again, but this time we'll do it from outside the virtual image. So this should now contact this page, hopefully. takes a little minute and there we go this is the same page click here and that takes us back to the start okay so the uh, answer here is yes okay so we can now close this have a look here so we have our fred.aspx and our fred.cs which is our c sharp file this is our code behind page so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some telnet access so telnet 192.168.75.132 Yes Administrator Napier Ok and that, that says in now So the default folder over here is actually in our documents and settings so here we are. Okay, so I, we can actually create something here. Let's say DRR goes into my file. Then hopefully over here we can see my file. Okay, so there's the there's the contents of that. Then we can exit. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is connect to the the FTP server. Telnet one nine two one six eight and it's seventy five dot Okay, so we're now connected to the FTP service. The user is administrator. Uh, 
mistyped it. Administrator password is Napier. Okay, so that's that's as in now. And in time, we can look at the commands that are supported by FTP. So a command such as list will give us a, a list of the, the commands that we can actually use. SYST will give us our main system, operating system. A type I will give us ASCII rather than binary. And then we can go on to a passive, passive FTP. With this, it, <coughs> it tells us which ports it's actually using. The first four bytes represent the IP address, and the second defines which port that we're going to use to transfer the data. Port 21 is used for control, and we the FT, passive FTP creates another port which we must connect to for the data transfer. So we'll just do a calculation of what port it's going to open up for us. So it's 4 times 256 plus 77, which is port 1001. So what we'll do is we'll open up another telnet connection and two one six eight four dot one three two and the port that, that's going to be used is port one zero one it's not ready yet but what we'll do is we'll just do a list and it's uh, 75.132 and we must have miscalculated the port here so what we'll do is we'll try again this is 78 4 times 256 plus 78 is 1102 it's not 4, we got the wrong address the last time it's 43 oops, it's 132 try again Six plus seventy nine, which is one one zero three. And the reason it didn't work the last time is that we got the wrong IP address one three two dot one one zero three. This time it should be okay. So we'll do a list and then we connect and we can see that's that's what this time. So we calculate the port, we take this number, multiply it by 256 and add on this number and it will define the port that we need to connect to. Okay, so, so now let's look at the echo port. So 